Hi, this is Mr. Max. So what I'm doing here today, I am going to do uh, four questions on indices. This is based on uh, the maybe a AS level. So I'm going to have quite a few videos um, that I'm going to do on AS level. So this is chapter one. So I'm using the text with Y equals MX plus C. So I am also doing these questions with permission from the author. So I suggest that I think it is a very good book out there that you can use with your learners in order for them to um, master this course. And it's quite congested. You need to finish theme one in the first term and theme two in the second term. So there's quite a lot of work. So I'll be uploading on a certain folder in my channel, which is labeled AS level, all the videos based on this course. All right, so this is the beginning. So I've got four questions here. You're supposed to solve the following equations. The first one is seven y squared minus four is equal to one. The second one is five raised to the power of two x times three raised to the power of x is equal to one over 75. The third one here is five raised to the power of n squared minus four minus 125 raised to the power of n equals to zero. And these two are simultaneous equations that you're supposed to solve at the same time. So this one, 3 to the x times 243 raised to the power of y equals to 1. And the other one is 8 raised to the power of x divided by 2 raised to the power of y minus 12 equals to 1 over 16 raised to the power of 1 over y. Okay. Right. So give it a try. And if you have done it, then you can maybe perhaps play the video and see if you are on the same path. So the very first thing that I do here is I realize that this one can be written still heavily as seven raised to the power of zero. The aim is I want to make the bases the same. And once the bases are the same, I can drop the bases and I can only equate the indices. That is y squared minus four is equal to zero. And you realize this is the difference between two squares. And I hope you know how to solve this type of questions from here on. So you'll have two answers for y, one being y is positive, and the other one being y is negative 2, okay? The second one here, a little bit tricky, but not so much so. So what I do here is you see that 5 raised to the power of 2x can be written as 5 squared raised to the power of x times 3 raised to the power of x equals to 75 raised to the power of negative 1. Obviously here I'm using the negative index rule, if you want to call it that, or property. Right, so 5 squared is 25, so 25 raised to the power of x times 3 raised to the power of x equals to 75 raised to the power of negative 1. So here you realize they have got x's, the bases are not the same, but you are multiplying, but the indices are the same, so you multiply the bases, you keep the indices, so 25 times 3 gives you 75, so that comes from the power law. Again, now it brings me back to the part where the bases are the same, and I use this color coding in order for you to see. So once the bases are the same, I simply equate the indices. So therefore, x is equal to negative 1. The third one here, 5 raised to the power of n squared minus 4, minus 125 raised to the power of n equals to 0. So I suggest that you get this minus 125 to the nth power over on the other side. That's the very first thing I would do, because now it becomes a little bit easier. 125 is a power of 5, being 5 cubed. All right, so 5 cubed raised 5 raised to the power of 3n. And on the side, you have got 5 raised to the power of n squared minus 4. Again, you see, I indicated by making the bases using the same color for the bases, because I can drop them and only equate the indices. So n squared minus 4 equals to 3n. That becomes a quadratic equation and it should factorize. So I hope you still remember how to solve quadratic equations. There are plenty of plus videos that you can find on this channel on assisting you on how to solve quadratic equations. So the two values for n will be negative 1 and positive 4. Then the last one here that I am doing is uh, simultaneous equations that I said. So again, you use the same methodology like we did with the first three. So you have got 3 raised to the power of x times 3 raised to the power of 5y. 3 to the power of 5 gives you 243. And again, I'm writing one cleverly as 3 raised to the power of 0. So the bases are the same. And then I add the indices here because I'm multiplying these two bases here. So x plus 5y equals to 0. And I also drop the bases. So that can be my first equation. So the other objective is to do the same with the second equation. And you're going to solve them simultaneously. So first of all, 8 is power of 2. 
2 cubed and 16 is a power of 4 2 raised to the power of 4 so clean that up all right you realize that i am using now red to indicate to you the powers or the bases to separate them so that you can clearly see and then i clean up on this side and it has to be negative because it was not under because now you're using the negative index just to remember and once i'm here 3x divided by and because you are dividing you are going to subtract the indices so i'm dropping the bases as it is and you clean that up you get 3x minus y plus 12, very important, equals to negative 4 over y. So I don't like that particular y there. So I'm going to multiply throughout by y on the left as well as on the right. That means 3x times y, negative y times y, and 12 times y, obviously leaving with the negative 4 here. So this is the second equation that I have now. So I have two equations, and one is being quadratic. So the way you solve something like this is you probably have to use the linear one here, or this one, and you make x or y the subject of the formula. So I'm comfortable making x the subject of the formula. Once you have made x the subject of the formula, then you substitute this minus 5y for x into this equation here. Okay, and uh, it simply now have got y's in it. You clean that up first. You must multiply the y over so negative five y squared before you multiply off the three, and then you have got negative fifteen y squared minus y squared plus twelve y equals to negative four. You clean it up further, and uh, you realize that I have multiplied throughout by negative here. So negative gives me positive here. Positive becomes negative, and so on. Anyway, I can actually simplify this by dividing throughout by four. Whatever you do, you should arrive at four y squared minus three y minus one is equal to zero. So this is now a quadratic equation which you should solve. And you can use any method to solve this particular quadratic equation. Right, so if I bring that equation 4y squared minus 3y minus 1. If you are at this part, you should be able to solve this equation. And one of the things is about these multi-topics is that this equation most of the time will factorize. You can easily look for it. Later on, we're going to look at things like discriminant. But uh, I would use your factorization here just for clarity. But you can use the formula or complete the square. Shouldn't have to take so long to get the answer. All right. So please refer back to some old videos if you get stuck in order for you to solve quadratic equations or refer back to the ordinary level stuff. Then you realize that then there are two values for y. One being y is equal to 1 or y is equal to negative 1 quarter. So now... I have got these solutions for y, but I'm also looking for the values of x, the corresponding values of x if y is negative one quarter or if y is equal to one. So I will use this equation in order for me to find the corresponding values of x. Right, so inputting that into that equation when y is equal to negative one quarter, you realize that x is equal to five quarters. Or you will realize that if y is equal to 1, then inputting that for x, you will get that x is equal to negative 5. These are the solutions to these equations. All right. So, again, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel so that you can get updates and also click the notification bell so that every time if I upload videos that you can find them and then you can refer to them. Again, as I said, I am going to do a whole lot of, uh, of videos based on chapter one and so on. So every day this is a daily thing and also I need you as students who are preparing for this course to work extra harder because this is a lot of work and your understanding is quite key and vital.